I met the love of my life on holiday in the Maldives. We spent the night together and went our separate ways. But when I saw her at the airport standing right next to me, I had never been to the Maldives before. And to be honest, I wasn't really the type to take spontaneous holidays to tropical islands. But after the year I'd had, I needed to get away. The stress from work was suffocating. My relationship had just ended in a spectacularly awful way, and I was starting to feel like I was drowning in my own life. So, when my friend James suggested a last-minute getaway, I threw caution to the wind and booked a flight. The Maldives was everything I needed and more. The sun was warm, the ocean was a brilliant blue, and for the first time in months, I felt like I could breathe. I spent my days lounging on the beach, sipping on cocktails, and forgetting about all the problems waiting for me back home. It was paradise, and for a brief moment, I was content to just exist. It was on the third night that I met her. The resort had a small bar that overlooked the water, the perfect spot to watch the sunset. I had gone there to relax, not expecting much. The last thing I wanted was to get tangled up in a holiday romance. But as I sat there, sipping on a margarita, she walked in, and suddenly, my entire world shifted. She was stunning, with long dark hair that cascaded down her back and eyes that sparkled with mischief. She had an effortless grace about her, the kind that made you stop and take notice. She caught my eye, and for a moment, we just stared at each other, the noise of the bar fading into the background. Then she smiled, and it was like the sun had risen all over again. Is this seat taken? She asked, pointing to the stool next to me. I shook my head, trying to play it cool. No, go ahead. She sat down, and we started talking. Her name was Olivia, and she was from London, taking a break from her hectic life, just like me. The conversation flowed easily, like we had known each other for years instead of minutes. We talked about everything, our jobs, our families, the places we traveled, and the dreams we had for the future. There was an instant connection, a spark that was impossible to ignore. Before we knew it, hours had passed, and the bar was closing. We decided to take a walk along the beach, the sound of the waves crashing against the shore, the only noise around us. The night was warm, the stars shining brightly above us. It felt like a dream, too perfect to be real. We stopped at a secluded spot, sitting down on the sand. I could feel the heat of her body next to mine, her shoulder brushing against me. I turned to look at her, and our eyes met. For a moment, neither of us spoke the air thick with unspoken words. Then, without thinking, I leaned in and kissed her. It was like a spark igniting a fire. The kiss was soft at first, tentative, as if we were both afraid to break the spell. But then it deepened, the world around us disappearing until there was nothing but the two of us. Her lips were warm and sweet, and I felt a sense of rightness like everything in the universe had aligned in that single moment. We spent the night together, wrapped up in each other, forgetting about everything else. It was passionate, intense, and real in a way that I hadn't felt in a long time. For the first time in months, I felt alive, like I was finally waking up from a long, dreary sleep. We didn't talk about the future, didn't make any promises. We just existed in the moment, letting the night carry us away. When the morning came, reality started to creep back in. We lay in bed, the sunlight streaming through the curtains, neither of us wanting to break the spell. But we both knew that this was just a moment in time, a beautiful memory that would eventually fade. We got dressed, exchanged numbers, and said our goodbyes, promising to stay in touch even though we both knew we probably wouldn't. It was easier that way, to leave it as a perfect memory rather than try to make it fit into our real lives. I watched her walk away, her silhouette framed by the rising sun, and felt a pang of sadness. It was bittersweet, knowing that I had found something so perfect only to have to let it go. But that's the thing about life. Sometimes the most beautiful moments are the ones that are fleeting, the ones that you can't hold on to no matter how much you want to. As I packed my bags and headed to the airport, 
I tried to push thoughts of Olivia out of my mind. I told myself it was just a holiday fling, something to remember fondly but not hold on to. I was returning to my real life, where things were complicated and messy, not the perfect paradise I had found with her. But as I walked through the airport, I felt a strange sense of deja vu. The crowds, the noise, the bustling energy, it all felt surreal like I was watching it from a distance. I made my way to the boarding gate, lost in my thoughts when I saw her. She was standing right there, just a few feet away from me, her suitcase by her side. Her eyes widened in surprise as she saw me, and I felt my heart skip a beat. For a moment, we just stared at each other the same way we had when we first met. Then she smiled, and I felt that same spark ignite all over again. Olivia, I said, my voice barely above a whisper. Fancy meeting you here, she replied, her smile widening. I couldn't help but laugh, the absurdity of the situation hitting me all at once. We had both thought it was a one-time thing, a beautiful memory to carry with us. But here we were, standing in the middle of an airport, fate throwing us back together. Are you on this flight? I asked, still trying to wrap my head around the coincidence. She nodded. Looks like we're going the same way. The boarding call came over the speakers, and we moved towards the gate, side by side. I didn't know what this meant, or what was going to happen next. But as we walked towards the plane, I couldn't help but feel like maybe, just maybe, this was more than just a chance encounter. Maybe this was the beginning of something real. Stay tuned to find out what happens next. Our holiday fling was far from over, and fate had more in store for us than we could have ever imagined. As we boarded the plane, I couldn't shake the feeling that the universe was playing some kind of elaborate joke on us. We had parted ways thinking our night in the Maldives was just a beautiful, fleeting moment, never expecting to see each other again. But there she was, standing beside me in line, as if the universe had decided we weren't finished yet. We found our seats. She was two rows behind me. I glanced back as I stowed my bag in the overhead compartment, and she caught my eye, giving me a small smile. There was something electric in that smile, a silent acknowledgement that whatever this was, it wasn't over. I took my seat, my mind racing with thoughts of her. This trip had been about getting away from my complicated life, yet here I was falling into something that felt just as complicated. Once the plane was in the air, I couldn't resist. I unbuckled my seatbelt and made my way back to her row, hoping the flight attendants wouldn't scold me for wandering around. She looked up, a look of pleasant surprise on her face. Mind if I sit here? I asked, gesturing to the empty seat beside her. Be my guest, she replied moving her bag to make room. I sat down, feeling the familiar rush of excitement I had felt the night before. We were close, so close that I could feel the warmth of her body next to mine. For a moment, we just sat there, the hum of the plane filling the silence. Then I turned to her, unable to keep the grin off my face. I can't believe this is happening, I said, shaking my head. What are the odds? She laughed softly her eyes sparkling. Pretty slim, I'd say. Maybe it's fate. Maybe. I agreed, my heart skipping a beat at the thought. So, what are you doing after this flight? Back to the grind? She nodded, her expression turning thoughtful. Yeah, back to the real world. I've got meetings lined up all week. What about you? I sighed, thinking about the pile of work waiting for me. Same. My boss is probably going to have a heart attack when he sees my inbox. But honestly, after this trip, I feel like I can handle anything. We fell into an easy conversation, talking about everything and nothing. It felt natural, like we had known each other for years instead of just a day. She told me more about her life in London, her job as a marketing director, her love for traveling, and her close-knit group of friends. I found myself opening up to her in a way I hadn't with anyone else. I told her about my job, my recent breakup, and how I had felt so lost before this trip. Why did you break up? She asked, her voice gentle, genuinely curious. I hesitated, not sure how much to share. 
But something about Olivia made me want to be honest. She wanted different things, I said finally. She wanted to settle down, buy a house, start a family. And I, I wasn't ready for all that. I felt like I needed to figure myself out first. It wasn't fair to keep stringing her along, so we ended it. Olivia nodded, her expression understanding. It's better to be honest, even if it hurts. At least now, you're free to find out what you really want. Yeah, I said, looking into her eyes. Yeah, I guess I am. We talked for hours, losing track of time. The flight attendants brought around drinks and snacks, and we barely noticed two wrapped up in each other. I felt a connection with her that was unlike anything I had ever experienced. It was more than just physical attraction. There was something deeper, a bond that I couldn't explain. As the flight went on, the conversation shifted to lighter topics. We laughed about the weird things that had happened on our trip, shared embarrassing stories from our past, and even made plans to meet up back home. It was crazy, considering we had just met, but it felt right. There was no awkwardness, no hesitation, just an easy, natural flow that made everything else fade away. Eventually, the cabin lights dimmed, signaling that it was time to rest. Most of the passengers around us had already fallen asleep, their heads resting against the windows or slumped on their trays. I glanced at Olivia, feeling a pang of disappointment. I didn't want this to end, didn't want to lose this feeling of connection. You should probably get some rest, I said, though I didn't really want her to. She smiled, her eyes softening. Yeah, I probably should, but she didn't move, didn't pull away. Instead, she leaned her head against my shoulder, closing her eyes. I froze for a moment, surprised, then relaxed, letting her stay there. Her hair smelled like coconut and salt, a reminder of the beach where we had met. As she drifted off to sleep, I felt a strange sense of contentment. I watched her breathe, her face peaceful, and felt my own eyes growing heavy. It was surreal, sitting on a plane with a woman I had just met, feeling like I had known her my whole life. I closed my eyes, letting sleep take over, feeling a sense of calm wash over me. I woke up to the sound of the captain announcing our descent. I blinked, disoriented, and realized that Olivia was still leaning against me, her head resting on my shoulder. I shifted slightly, and she stirred, blinking up at me with sleepy eyes. Good morning, she said, her voice soft. Morning, I replied, smiling down at her. Looks like we're almost home. She sat up, stretching, and I felt a pang of loss at the absence of her warmth. We gathered our things as the plane began its descent, both of us lost in our own thoughts. The reality of the situation was starting to set in. We were going back to our normal lives, and whatever magic we had found in the Maldives would soon be just a memory. But as the plane touched down and we taxied to the gate, I felt a surge of determination. I wasn't ready to let this go. Not yet. There was something special here, something worth exploring. I turned to Olivia, taking a deep breath. Hey, do you? I don't know. Want to grab a coffee or something after we get through customs? I'd like to see you again, if you're up for it. She looked at me, a slow smile spreading across her face. I'd like that, she said. I'd like that a lot. As we disembarked and made our way through the airport, I felt a sense of excitement bubbling up inside me. Maybe this wasn't just a holiday fling. Maybe this was the start of something real, something that could last. I didn't know what the future held, but I was willing to find out. Stay tuned because our story is just beginning. What started as a chance encounter in the Maldives was turning into something much bigger, and I had a feeling that fate had more surprises in store for us. After getting through customs, Olivia and I made our way to a cafe in the airport terminal. We were both tired from the flight, but the excitement of being together again kept us energized. The cafe was bustling with travelers, the scent of coffee filling the air. We found a small table in the corner, away from the crowds, and sat down. Do you think we'd ever see each other again if we hadn't met at the airport? I asked, my eyes locked on hers. 
It felt surreal sitting there with her, the noise of the airport fading into the background. She stirred her coffee thoughtfully, her eyes flickering up to meet mine. Honestly, I don't know, she said with a small smile. But I'm glad we did. It's like, I don't know, maybe the universe was giving us a sign. I nodded, feeling a warmth spread through me at her words. It's crazy, right? Out of all the flights, all the people, we ended up on the same one. Maybe it's fate. Maybe, she agreed, her smile widening. Or maybe it's just really good luck. We talked for a while, our conversation flowing effortlessly as always. I felt like I could talk to her for hours, about anything and everything. She had this way of making me feel seen, like she truly understood me. It was something I hadn't felt in a long time, and I was reluctant to let it go. So, what now? I asked, taking a sip of my coffee. We're both back to our real lives, back to the daily grind. How do we, you know, make this work? She looked at me, her expression thoughtful. I don't know, she admitted, but I want to try. I mean, I don't know where this is going, but I like being with you. I don't want to lose that. I felt a surge of relief at her words. I feel the same way, I said, reaching across the table to take her hand. Her skin was soft and warm, and I felt a jolt of electricity at the contact. Maybe we just take it one step at a time, see where this goes. She squeezed my hand, her smile reassuring. Yeah, one step at a time. We finished our coffee, talking about plans for the next few days. She had work meetings lined up, and I had to dive back into my never-ending pile of emails. But we agreed to meet up later in the week to keep the connection alive. It felt good to have a plan, to know that this wasn't just a one-time thing. As we walked out of the cafe, I felt a mix of excitement and nervousness. I had never been one for long-distance relationships, and London was a fair distance from my place. But there was something about Olivia, something that made me believe this could work despite the odds. We made our way to the taxi stand, and I hailed a cab for her. As we stood there, waiting, I felt a sudden pang of fear. What if this didn't work out? What if we couldn't find a way to bridge the distance, to make this work in the real world? The thought scared me more than I cared to admit. Hey, she said, pulling me out of my thoughts. Don't overthink it, okay? Let's just enjoy this, see where it takes us. I nodded, trying to push the doubts out of my mind. She was right. There was no point in worrying about the future when we had the present right in front of us. The cab pulled up, and I opened the door for her. Call me when you get home? I asked, my voice soft. Of course, she replied, leaning in to kiss me. It was a soft, lingering kiss full of promise. I watched as she got into the cab, my heart full and light. She waved as the cab pulled away, and I stood there, watching until it disappeared from view. The days that followed were a blur of work and routine, but my mind kept drifting back to Olivia. We texted constantly, our conversations flowing as easily as they had in person. Every message from her made me smile, a reminder of the connection we had found. I was falling for her, and it terrified me. But at the same time, it felt right. It felt real. We met up later that week as planned. I had spent the whole day looking forward to it, my mind unable to focus on anything else. When I saw her waiting outside the restaurant, I felt a rush of happiness that I hadn't felt in a long time. She looked beautiful, her dark hair falling in waves around her shoulders, her eyes lighting up when she saw me. Hey, I said, pulling her into a hug. Her arms wrapped around me, and for a moment, everything else faded away. Hey, she replied, her voice muffled against my shoulder. I missed you. I missed you too, I admitted pulling back to look at her. Come on, let's get inside. I made reservations. We spent the evening talking, laughing, and just enjoying each other's company. It felt like we were the only two people in the world, like nothing else mattered. I found myself opening up to her even more, telling her things I hadn't told anyone. She listened, her eyes never leaving mine, and I felt a connection that went deeper than words. After dinner, we took a walk by the river, 
the city lights reflecting off the water. It was a cool night, and I slipped my arm around her shoulders, pulling her close. She leaned into me, her head resting against my shoulder, and I felt a sense of contentment I hadn't felt in a long time. This feels right, I said, my voice soft. Like this is where I'm supposed to be. She looked up at me, her eyes shining. I know what you mean, she said. I feel the same way. It's scary, but I think this could be something really special. Me too. I agree, my heart pounding. And I want to see where it goes. No matter what it takes. We stopped, turning to face each other. The city buzzed around us, but in that moment, it felt like we were the only two people in the world. I reached out, cupping her face in my hands, and kissed her. It was a slow, tender kiss full of promise. When we pulled away, she was smiling, her eyes sparkling with happiness. Let's make this work, I said, my voice firm. Whatever it takes, let's do it. She nodded, her smile widening. Okay, she said. Let's do it. As we walked back, hand in hand, I felt a sense of hope that I hadn't felt in a long time. We had found something special, something worth fighting for. And for the first time in a long time, I felt like everything was going to be okay. Stay tuned, because this story is far from over. We were just beginning our journey, and I had a feeling there were more surprises in store for us. The future was uncertain, but with Olivia by my side, I was ready to face whatever came our way. The weeks that followed were a whirlwind of emotions, late-night calls, and weekend getaways. Olivia and I made it work despite the distance between us, meeting up whenever our schedules allowed. It wasn't always easy, juggling work, travel, and our budding relationship, but every moment we spent together was worth it. Each time we had to say goodbye, it hurt a little more, but the next hello was always sweeter. Our friends thought we were crazy. Long-distance relationships had a reputation for being tough, and ours was no different. But the connection we shared was undeniable. It felt like a storybook romance, the kind you read about but never think you'll experience yourself. The Maldives had been the beginning, but each day felt like a new chapter, full of possibilities. One Friday evening, I found myself pacing around my apartment, too excited to sit still. Olivia was flying in for the weekend, and I had a surprise planned. The months we'd spent together had been incredible, but I wanted to take the next step. I'd found an old vinyl record of her favorite band, and I planned to give it to her at a small, intimate dinner I had set up at my place. I glanced at my watch for the hundredth time. Her flight was supposed to land an hour ago, but I hadn't heard from her. I told myself not to worry. It was probably just a delay or something minor. I sent her a quick text. Hey, did you land okay? Can't wait to see you. Smiley face. I waited, but there was no reply. My stomach twisted with anxiety, a thousand what-ifs racing through my mind. I tried calling her, but it went straight to voicemail. The evening passed in a blur of worry, my excitement fading into a gnawing sense of dread. Around 10 p.m., my phone buzzed. It was Olivia. Relief washed over me as I answered. Olivia, I've been trying to reach you. Is everything okay? There was a pause, and then I heard her voice, soft and strained. Hey, I'm sorry. Something came up. What's wrong? I asked, my heart sinking at the tone of her voice. I, I don't know how to say this, she said, her voice cracking. I got a job offer. It's, it's a great opportunity, but it's in New York. They want me to start in a month. New York? My mind went blank, trying to process what she was saying. But, what about us? I stammered my throat tight. I mean, we're just getting started. You're moving to New York? I don't know what to do, she said, her voice thick with tears. This is my dream job, but I don't want to lose you. I don't know if we can make this work from so far away. A million thoughts raced through my mind, none of them making sense. I felt like the ground was crumbling beneath me, everything we had built falling apart. I want you to take the job, I said finally, my voice hoarse. You've worked so hard for this. I can't ask you to give it up for me. But what about us? She asked, her voice barely a whisper. 
I don't want to lose you. We'll figure it out, I said, trying to sound confident. Even though I felt anything but. We've made it this far. We can find a way to make this work. I believe in us. There was a long silence, and I could hear her crying softly on the other end. My heart ached, wanted to reach out and hold her, to make everything okay. But all I could do was listen, feeling helpless. I don't want to lose you, she said again, her voice breaking. You won't, I promised. I'm not going anywhere. We'll find a way. We talked for a while longer, both of us trying to reassure each other that everything would be okay. But when we hung up, I felt a hollow emptiness settle in my chest. I admit what I said. I wanted her to take the job, to follow her dreams. But the thought of her being so far away, of our time together being reduced to phone calls and occasional visits, was almost too much to bear. The next few weeks were a blur of packing, planning, and trying to make the most of the time we had left. We spent every moment we could together, savoring each kiss, each touch, knowing it might be a while before we could do this again. We made promises to call, to visit, to keep our connection alive no matter what. The day she left was one of the hardest days of my life. I took her to the airport, my heart heavy with a mix of love and fear. We stood at the gate, holding each other, neither of us wanting to let go. I'm going to miss you so much, she whispered, her voice thick with emotion. I'll miss you too, I said, my voice breaking. But this isn't goodbye. It's just see you later. She nodded, tears streaming down her face. See you later, she echoed, leaning in to kiss me one last time. I watched as she walked through the gate, my chest aching with every step she took. When she was out of sight, I turned and walked away, feeling like a part of me was being left behind. The days that followed were hard. We talked every day, our conversations filled with love and longing. But as time went on, the distance started to take its toll. Our calls became shorter, our texts less frequent. I could feel her slipping away, and it terrified me. One night, as I lay in bed staring at the ceiling, my phone rang. It was Olivia. I answered, my heart pounding. Hey, I said, trying to keep my voice light. Hey, she replied, her voice hesitant. We need to talk. My stomach dropped. I knew what was coming. I could hear it in her voice, the sadness, the resignation. Okay, I said, bracing myself. I've been thinking a lot, she said, her voice trembling. About us, about everything. And I. I don't think I can do this. The distance, the uncertainty, it's killing me. I love you, but I can't keep pretending that everything's okay when it's not. I close my eyes, the words cutting deep. So, what are you saying? I asked, my voice barely above a whisper. I think we need to take a break, she said, her voice cracking. I need to focus on my job, on building my life here. And you need to live your life too. I don't want us to end up resenting each other. Tears stung my eyes, and I swallowed hard, trying to keep my composure. Is this really what you want? I asked, my voice shaking. I don't know what I want, she admitted, her voice full of pain. But I know I can't keep doing this. It's not fair to either of us. I nodded, even though she couldn't see me. Okay, I said, my voice hollow. If that's what you need, then I'll respect that. But I'll never stop caring about you, Olivia. You mean too much to me. I know, she said, her voice soft. You mean a lot to me, too. I just, I need to figure things out. Yeah, I said, my throat tight. I understand. We said our goodbyes, both of us crying, and then the line went dead. I lay there in the dark, feeling the weight of the silence around me. She was gone, and I was alone. The weeks that followed were some of the hardest of my life. I threw myself into work, trying to keep my mind off the pain. Friends invited me out, tried to cheer me up, but nothing seemed to help. I missed her every day, missed the way she made me laugh, the way she made me feel alive. But I knew I had to let her go, to let her find her own path. Months passed, and slowly, the pain began to fade. 
I still thought about her, still missed her, but the ache wasn't as sharp. I started to find joy in other things, to rebuild my life without her. I met new people, made new memories, and began to feel like myself again. Then one day, out of the blue, my phone rang. I looked at the screen, my heart skipping a beat. It was Olivia. I hesitated, my mind racing. What did she want? Was this just a friendly call, or something more? I took a deep breath and answered. Hello. Hey, she said, her voice familiar and warm. It's been a while. Yeah, I said, a smile tugging at my lips. It has. I've been thinking a lot, she said, her voice soft. About you, about us. I made a mistake. I thought I needed to be alone to figure things out. But all I've figured out is that I miss you. I want to try again if you're willing. I know it won't be easy, but I don't want to let you go. My heart swelled, and I felt a wave of hope wash over me. I've missed you too, I said, my voice thick with emotion. I never stopped thinking about you. And yeah, I want to try again. Whatever it takes, I'm in. We talked for hours, catching up, laughing, and planning our future. It wouldn't be easy, but we were determined to make it work. The Maldives had brought us together, but it was our love, our connection, that had kept us going. We had found something special, something worth fighting for, and I knew in my heart that this time we would make it last. Thank you for sticking with me through this journey. Love isn't always easy, and sometimes life throws unexpected challenges our way. But if you're lucky, you'll find someone worth fighting for, someone who makes all the struggles worthwhile. Have you ever experienced a love that defied the odds? How did you make it work? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear your stories.